All right, well, this morning, as you can tell, I am not my husband. It's my day. <laughs> it's my day. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> it's my day. But this morning, um, the Lord, I feel the Lord has a word for all of us. Me first. I've been fleshing this out for a few weeks now. Um, so if you want to turn your Bibles to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that's going to be where we're going to start this morning. And it's a very familiar passage, um, and a lot of us probably can quote it, but sometimes we tend to skip over some things in it. But we're going to look at this um, to start with this morning. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. So to start with, let's look at the three actions that are in these verses. There's trust. Do not lean and acknowledge. Well, first, what does trust mean? It means to rely on and have confidence in something or a person. And in verse 5, we are told to trust in the Lord with our whole heart. Not just a piece of it, where a lot of us sometimes do, but with our whole heart. And what does that mean exactly? Well, that means to fully surrender to the person and character of God. Because we can trust him. The second action that we see is do not lean. Well, lean, we know, means to support ourselves or to rely on. But verse 5 is telling us not to lean on our own understanding. Don't rely on ourselves. Now, we may think or try to understand everything, and the truth is we don't always understand, especially when things aren't going the way that we think they should go. It's hard not to lean on our own understanding because, like myself, I like to know how things are going to work out and when. When. I'm like, I need it now, Lord. And the third action here is acknowledge. And that means simply to know, being aware of, having fellowship with. Now, verse 6 tells us that as we acknowledge him and seek his will, that he will direct our paths. He will show us what to do in every situation. But when we do this, we may think that God is somehow not showing up for us or making this better in our timing that we would like. But then we have to refer back to verse 5. And what does it say? Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Throughout the Bible, Scripture affirms the total trustworthiness of God especially in relation to the promises of his people. Faith is simply trusting in the person and character of God. And it is so easy to say that we trust God, but it is a lot harder to do when we are facing a difficult situation. And I know some of us have trust issues with people. And that could be a hindrance to us when we are trying to trust God with our situations. But let me encourage you this morning. God is trustworthy. Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? The word of God is very clear that we do have an enemy working against us as children of God. And our enemy's goal is to steal from us the life and joy that God gives through his son. He wants to kill and destroy our confidence in the one who gave his life for us to have eternal life. What Romans 8.31 does mean is that God is greater than anyone or anything that stands against us as his child. This morning, I do have an illustration. And um, I've asked my children, Madison and Jarrett, y'all give them a hand. <laughs> They're going to come help me with this. And <clears throat> now a lot of you have probably either heard about this, read about it, or actually have participated in it. There you go. Um, and it's called the trust fall process. <laughs> yeah, everybody's laughing. <laughs> it's great. The trust fall is a trust and team building exercise in which one individual, the truster, which will be Madison, leans back prepared to fall to the ground. Another individual, the trustee, which will be Jarrett, catches the first individual. 
And the exercise builds trust because the truster puts himself at risk, expecting that the trustee will break their fall. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Okay. You gotta make it bigger than that. Do it again. Make it bigger. One. Do it again. One, two, three. Okay, and one more time. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> now, I had them do this a few times to prove a point. And Madison trusted her brother to catch her, mainly because if he would have dropped her, she would have come up swinging. Um, <laughs> but we can rest assured that God, when he is the trustee, can always be trusted, no matter how many times we are faced with a hard, difficult situation. So in our lives, we are the truster. God is the trustee. And we may think or feel that we put ourselves at risk when we totally surrender to the Lord. And it can be a very vulnerable place to be. Because we may feel that God isn't going to catch us or take care of our situation. Sometimes we fear the outcome. Or that God may not come through for us in time. But God. But God. Since today is Mother's Day, we're going to look at a few biblical examples of motherhood's difficulties. Now, Eve was the first mother who lost one child at the hands of another. Genesis 4.25 says, And God has appointed me another child in place of Abel because Cain killed him. And that's when Seth was born. Eve's faith or her trust in God was displayed when she said God had appointed her another seed or another child to replace Abel. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us about how she felt or anything more about her situation. But as a mom, I can't imagine what that would have felt like having to go through that hard, that difficult situation. But I do know that she trusted God. Eve lost two sons. Abel was dead. And according to Genesis 4.16, Cain went out of the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. To me, this is the most devastating experience that a parent can face, the loss of a child. But God in his faithfulness brought life from death in that situation. Rebecca is our second mother we're going to reflect on. Now, she was the wife of Isaac who struggled with favoritism of her younger son, Jacob, over Esau, her older son. Now, she stepped in, and she did everything she could to give the birthright to her favored son through deception. Now, my kids are always telling me that they are the favorite child. More Jarrett than anybody, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, I have told each of my children, I have told Madison, you are my favorite daughter. And I have told Jarrett that you are my favorite son. And they received that really well. So I guess they're both my favorites. Now, my sister and I do the same to our parents, especially with my dad. And he plays along. And he tells us, I have a sister, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but he will tell us, hey, your sister got me this for last Father's Day or my birthday or Christmas. So what bigger, better thing are you going to get me the next time? And now he is always joking, of course, at least I think he is. Um, but even when he shows us whose picture is in the prime spot of his wallet. But then I realized a grandkid took over that spot. But I still claim that I'm the favorite child because I'm the oldest, and that's just the way it should be. <laughs> but back to Rebecca. Genesis 25, 23 says, And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. And two peoples will be separated from your body. 
and one people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. In Rebecca's situation, even though she tried to make things happen herself, God's plan was bigger than she could have ever known. And the last mother I want to mention this morning is Jochebed, the mother of Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Now, she is only mentioned by name in the genealogies of Exodus 6 and Numbers 26. Jochebed, she was a caring Hebrew mom who had to give up her son Moses. She trusted God that Moses would be taken care of. So Jochebed took baby Moses, put him in a basket, placed him among the reeds by the bank of the Nile River. And then Pharaoh's unnamed daughter found him and asked her servant Miriam, which was Moses' sister, if she would like for her to find a Hebrew nursing mom, and she said yes. So Miriam went and got Jochebed, Moses' very own mother, to nurse him until he grew older before being adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. Again, God's plan was bigger than Jochebed giving up her son. And we know all the stories of what Moses did in the Word. Well, despite the difficulties that these moms faced, God used their situations to accomplish his purpose. So this morning, are you trusting that God will use your situation to accomplish his purpose? Sometimes during the situations, I think, why would the Lord allow me to go through this situation and how can he use this for his purpose? We don't know, always know the answers to these questions. Again, that's where we have to trust in his divine plan. As moms, as dads, there are a wide variety of difficulties that we can face with our children. But God is faithful, and we have to trust him. We have to lean on him and into him and acknowledge and seek his will for our children, our marriages, our families, our lives, and in everything. I have learned this is sometimes difficult, and it, I have learned this is sometimes difficult for those who like to control every situation. And I know we've talked about control a lot in some of the ladies' Bible studies. But I do understand that the majority of moms have to raise children as they are keeping up with household responsibilities, as well as some working outside the home. So to make sure everything runs smoothly, God has given us those abilities to be able to take care of things and balance everything out. But because we do that, we try to control situations that are not within our control. And then we feel helpless, we feel overwhelmed, or even out of control ourselves. Anybody else or just me? That's when we have to stand on God's word. Just like in our opening scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. In every season of life, whether it is motherhood, as a young person, later in life, God honors those who trust in him. And I am reminded about the woman with the issue of blood. Her story is found in the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, but I want us to look at the account in Luke 8, 43 through 48 this morning. <clears throat> now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now I want us to look at verse 47 where it says, 
when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she realized in that moment that she could be seen by everyone, even by Jesus. Sometimes we have to come out from hiding, so to speak. God wants you to know that he sees you in your situation. He has heard every prayer. He has seen every tear that you have cried. And he wants you to know that you can trust him. And I have learned that trusting God puts me in a very vulnerable position and even feeling exposed at times. But every day, making the choice to trust him builds my faith and allows me to grow in my relationship with him, even while I am waiting for him to work in my situation. And I'm growing in my understanding of Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12.10. It says, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in distresses, in persecutions, in difficulties, in behalf of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am made strong. Paul is delighting in the reality that weaknesses, insults, distresses, persecutions, and difficulties become highways that bring God's strength into our lives. And I love the song Waymaker. Part of the lyrics are, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Trusting that God is still working even when we don't see it or feel it is just like the trust fall illustration. We have to trust him with everything because God is faithful. He will never let us down. Just remember, God's timing is never our timing. Again, reflecting on the woman with the issue of blood, she waited 12 years to be healed. So don't give up. Don't give up. Scripture tells us she went to physicians and nobody could help her. But then she had an encounter with Jesus. Worship team, if you would come on back up. This morning, are you willing to have an encounter with Jesus about your situation? I know there are several situations that are represented across the room. Some I know about, most I don't. But God knows. God sees. He knows about every single one. And he sees you right where you are. He sees you in your pain. Now some may say, I doubt my situation's ever going to change. It's been going on and going on. Others may say, if I could just have a sign or just know that God is taking care of it. Still others may say, I don't want to tell anyone what I'm facing. I just would like to have somebody to pray with me. Well, right now, I want to invite you to the altar. I would love to pray with you. There are other people in this room who would love to pray with you. But more than that, an encounter with Jesus is what is needed. Most of the time, the majority of people stay in their seats when it's time for the altar call for various reasons. And some may say, I can just pray right here. Well, that is true. I think sometimes we have to make that step. We have to get out of our own way to allow the Lord to do the work in us. And sometimes that is getting out of our seat and coming to the front just to spend time with Him and allowing others to come around us in prayer. So I encourage you as we stand, let this morning be an action step in your trusting the Lord to work in you and to have an encounter with Jesus. So mamas, dads, are you trusting God with your child? Are you trusting God in your marriage? Are you trusting God for a financial miracle? Are you trusting God for healing? Are you at a crossroads and not sure which way to go? Trust God. He will direct you. He will lead and guide you. Are you standing there and you have never asked Jesus into your heart and you don't know what trusting in God is all about? 
I invite you to come. Have an encounter with Jesus this morning and allow him to show himself trustworthy to you. Come now and let us all pray together.